September 3rd meeting of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Uh, the first case we uh, had on the agenda tonight has been rescheduled or postponed uh, to uh, December 17th uh, due to an incorrect uh, legal notice and that's being republished again. Uh, I guess we're not on. On that one. So, th so that's all I'll say for that. I don't believe there's anybody here for that case, uh, case number 1513. Uh, as I say, will be uh, postponed until uh, December 17th uh, on that. Uh, next case on the agenda <coughs> we have tonight is case number 1514. Uh, on the uh, petition of uh, AUB Engineering. Uh, who seeks a variance from the sign regulations uh, in order to put in uh, LED signs at their uh, gas station on the property located 87 Walker's Book Drive, right in Massachusetts. I believe they're here tonight. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me uh, go ahead and uh, read the legal notice and swear you in, and then we can proceed on that. Legal notice, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, uh, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, December 3rd, 2015, at 7 p.m. On the petition of AOB Engineering, who seeks a variance from the sign regulations, section 8.0, in order to modify freestanding signs, a freestanding sign, to include LED lighting and add LED pump topper signs to the gas pumps, add a canopy sign illuminated on the property located at 87 Walker's Book Drive, Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there's an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may want to speak tonight, Please stand, raise your right hand, and I'll administer the oath. So if anybody's going to speak on behalf of this, okay, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Responses, I do. I do. Oh, okay, thank you. If you would like to present your case, identify yourself and present your case, yeah. Okay, my name is Steve Pedro with AU Engineering. I'm here on behalf of my client, Maria Energy, uh, representing the Shell Station at 87 Walker's Brook, uh, <coughs> what we're looking to do is Shell is uh, looking to upgrade some of the signage at that location. Uh, the upgrades include modification to the existing freestanding sign to include LED price panels. Uh, the, the norm in the industry now is that these price panel uh, price signs are no longer the placards that get uh, manually installed. It goes to a uh, a computerized system that the attendant is able to change the price at the uh, the console. Uh, it, it, I guess it's costly in terms of maintaining the, the placards, they get damaged, and also a uh, safety concern of having uh, attendants go out in bad weather and uh, dealing with the, uh, the placards falling off and uh, coming down. <coughs> so one is the freestanding sign modification. In conjunction with that, the price sign, uh, are the t pump toppers, uh, state law requires the price be uh, shown above the dispensers. Uh, again, instead of going back with little magnetic stickers and changing the price, it's done, again, from the console. Uh, the attendant's able to change all the prices uh, without going out into the elements. Uh, and then the third aspect of it is the canopy. Uh, Shell is looking to uh, modify, improve the canopy by installing a couple of uh, logos, Shell logos on uh, either side of the canopy, and also a uh, 
an inter uh, illuminated red red band along the, the facade oh. of the canopy, uh, which would also backlight the, the yellow uh, facade. Uh, we've been before the uh, CDPC uh, regarding a uh, alteration or modification to a, uh, a signage plan, and uh, they concurred with uh, the modifications to the price sign, uh, modifications or the LED price uh, toppers, pump toppers, uh, they did not approve the, the canopy modifications, the internally illuminated red band or the, uh, the logos. Uh, should this board uh, support their uh, denial, uh, I just ask that if the variance be sort of separate, uh, mm -hmm. where it's not all or nothing, where we're able to say we can modify the ID sign as a variance, include the pump toppers, and keep the canopy as a, uh, a separate variance request. Uh, just briefly, that that's the, the scope of the work. Um, we try to, what we think is we're in com general conformance, or com not compliance, but conformance with the intent of the bylaw uh, of minimal signage. Uh, we, we, we know, you know the, the illumination of the canopy, uh, the building department uh, considered that all a sign, so then you're looking at an excessive size sign with the, as the canopy but uh, we think it's it's not a, a beacon it's more of a just a, a soft glow to uh, to give some uh, dimension uh, you know to the canopy <coughs> as you're driving up it's not a, a, a dark uh, facade so it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty much it okay thank you thank you uh, at this point we did have a comment from the uh, building inspector, Glenn Redman, who uh, sent a memo, it's in the case file. I will go ahead and, uh, it's a short little uh, memo that he did, and I will read that. Uh, Glenn noted, this application is a request to install LED sign on the freestanding sign that's already in place. Uh, four LED pump signs and to install a canopy sign with an illuminated red bar and yellow band. LED signs are not allowed. The four pump signs are additional signs not allowed and are of LED lighting. In addition, it is my opinion, that's Glenn, that this proposal of the canopy alterations is in fact an additional sign and not allowed by our zoning bylaws. Thank you, Glenn Redden, uh, Zoning Office of Town of Redden. And also I think you've got new packets uh, came later, you got your packet tonight, the uh, Certificate of Appropriateness from CPDC, and I think uh, the gentleman was uh, correct in noting, you know, what CPDC approved back in September on this. The, uh, the, the uh, I say, you see it's in their certificate uh, that they approved the LED lighting on the pumps and uh, on the uh, freestanding sign, but not on the canopy. Uh, David, any questions, comments on this? Uh, yeah, I have uh, a couple, uh, or maybe a few, depending mm -hmm. upon the answers to the first one. So um, the first one is, kind of, is more pr procedural in nature, and that is the certificate of, pro of appropriateness was granted to an applicant named 87 Walkers Brook Drive, LLC. And your application is on behalf of Maria Energy. Um, how are those are those related corporations? Well, eighty-seven Walkers Group LLC is the owners of the property. Owner uh, and operator. Owner and operator. This is Mr. Uh, Rick uh, Camuso. He's the owner operator of the uh, of the location. Maria is the uh, supplier of gasoline, Shell gasoline. And a part of their agreement is that they are responsible for the sort of improvements. Uh, they're looking to replace some dispensers uh, and do the, the signage modifications where we had uh, before you. Uh, they've hired us to permit that to, to go through the, uh, the various uh, boards. So they are they are technically our clients or the, the applicant. All right. So to, if I can just sure. simplify it a little bit. 
Noria Energy would be like the franchisor in this scenario? I guess you almost could say they're uh, an entity that is on the side. All right, and, and just because of the agreement with the owner-operator, the agreement states that, or the agreement provides that Norea would will apply for and be responsible for this type of right, um, to scenario. The permits, okay. Uh, to do um, improvements. And so, because the because a, a variance um, runs with the property, we would should the board be inclined to to issue the variance, it would have to be issued to to the LLC who's the owner of the property, and right. does that make a difference it, to you? That, no, okay. that does not make a difference to right. um, So it, yeah. it appears the engineering firm is here representing on behalf of the real so party and interest. What, what well, then is the official representation of the LLC? What is their actual name, legal name? Well, 87 Walkers Brook Drive, oh, LLC. LLC. Yeah, that's okay. what it says here in the application. And that's in the certificate of appropriateness <coughs> issued by CPDC. And basically said that was a engineering was acting as their agent. Right, right, okay. right. In the application anyway. Yeah, yeah and, and just to be just to be clear for the no, for that's purposes good. of yeah. the record. Thank you. Um, second is uh, the the pump toppers. All they have is the price of gasoline. They don't flash no. what's for sale inside no. or anything like that. No. Do they flash at all? They don't. They're similar to the price uh, panel on the ID sign. The only time they will change is when the price of the gasoline product actually changes from the console. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, once uh, I don't know. Uh, All right, and just looking through the notes from CPDC and in the plans and from what Glenn had to say. Is there any issue with regard to the height and the dimensions of the standalone sign? Uh, there was a discussion with the CDPC regarding that and uh, in talking with the uh, building inspector, he identified that the existing sign is uh, what he considers a uh, existing non-conforming structure. The improvements we're doing does not uh, create any new non-conformity? Exactly. It's going to be within the same dimensions as the current non-conforming sign? That's correct. So he did not even ask us to try to get a, a variance, an after-the-fact variance, because he says, you know, it's it's an existing uh, non-conforming condition. Right. We're not making it any worse. So no relief was requested or required. I mean, you know, you know, LED is is the standard now in the industry, and you know, the bylaw is a little bit behind that, the times on that. I know that the bylaw is due to be updated. Um, we never got to it as part of our update, but uh, I'm hopeful that by the time it comes up for updating, which I guess will be in a year from now, by the time it gets in front of the, the body here, the town meeting, <coughs> that they'll bring it forward into the present. Uh, but that's not the only part of your application. Um, <coughs> Are there any safety reasons why you're applying for, I'm talking about the, um, the canopy alteration. Are there any safety reasons for having that shell sign or the reflective paint on the border of it? The only safety aspect of it is to identify the, the, the canopy, the site, as a shell location from uh, you know, a, a distance that's safe for somebody to s decide to make the turn into the station as opposed to, you know, trying to, to see other signage. Uh, right now, there's no signage on the canopy. Uh, so that's pretty much the only safety uh, aspect of, of the, uh, the signage on the canopy and the illumination that it does give the motoring public uh, at, at night uh, the ability to, to be able to spot the, uh, the services. <clears throat> and that's well. Does the applicant feel that the the pectin sign panel is not sufficient enough to alert motorists to the fact that you're a shell station? I drive by it all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, to I, I understand. I'm just I'm I'm not trying to be smart with you. I'm just trying to trying to figure out a way that trying to figure out the reasoning for it, basically. Um, 
that's all I have for now. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and uh, this is a variance. I didn't ask you when you made your presentation. Maybe after we get through questioning you, you could uh, go through your variance criteria uh, on that. Uh, maybe maybe we should do it first. John, are you interested in that? Uh, that's what I would bow to you for next with questions. Um, either way, I think we need to get through that process. Yeah. Okay, why, why don't you go through that, uh, your variance uh, criteria there. Uh, there's four criteria that you have to meet for a variance. Uh, the, the first one is describe the circumstances related to the soil condition, shape, and topography, which should affect the land or structure in question. Uh, right. What happens is the, uh, the ID sign, the freestanding uh, ID sign, is on a, uh, a significant slope. Uh, right now, there's, I don't know, maybe a five-foot difference between high and low. Uh, and because of that significant slope, uh, they installed a, uh, a metal platform, level platform, so that the, uh, the attendant could safe, safely change the price uh, without being on the, on the unlevel ground. Uh, in terms of the LED uh, lighting, <coughs> that, I mean, it's, it, the site uh, we're trying to provide uh, notification or price notification, which is one of the major items in terms of a lot of time people pulling into a station. What's the price of the gas? And not slowing down at the entry and trying to find out what the price is before they make the decision. It's easily recognizable. It's a good uh, price for a good product, and people make the decision to safely pull into the station without undue problems. Uh, the enforcement of the provisions, uh, literal enforcement, again, LED is not allowed, but literally uh, it may be an outdated uh, bylaw. A lot of towns now are changing it. I've been before many boards because the same thing. Uh, they didn't want reader boards, these message boards that scroll with LED messages, but these price signs are, are not that. It's, it's purely a safety issue and being able to keep the tenants in the uh, in the building without coming out in inclement weather in bad conditions. Uh, the hardship, well, the hardship is uh, we continue to have to have our attendants go out to the site, change the price panels. It's dangerous. It's walking across the you know the, the travel lanes of uh, the gasoline customers. Uh, so it's it, it would be less safe uh, to our attendants and to the motoring public. Uh, granting the relief, I don't think uh, nullifies or derogates from the intent of the bylaw. Uh, I think it's a, we've submitted a, a, a minimal signage package. I think uh, even the CDPC agrees uh, on the LED signage a aspect of it, the pricing panel aspect of it, uh, and we know they, they don't recommend or they did not approve the, uh, the lighting of the canopy and the additional two uh, logos on the canopy. Uh, again, we felt it was a uh, uh, somewhat of a restrictive uh, sign package, but uh, they think otherwise, and should this board also su uh, support their, uh, their findings or their position? Uh, mm -hmm. As I said, if we could separate that from the rest of the, uh, the requested variants <coughs> for LED, uh, I'd be most grateful. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Go on. Uh, you like um, well, is the um, Dunkin' Donuts um, signage at present the same as it would be on the new sign? I believe it is. It, the panel size is the same. So that hasn't really changed? That has not changed. Um, you have um, uh, a larger signage for the uh, price of the regular gas that's on your, and uh, that's going to be in red. That's correct. And the uh, diesel is going to be in green. Correct. But in smaller size. Correct. Um, so now you have four different colors on your signage. Could you tell me what the uh, number of lumens or what the illumination is? Uh, the. The lumens uh, for the for the signage, uh, I don't have 
uh, actual lumen numbers. The, the sign system itself has a, uh, a sensor where in bright daylight it would tend to uh, increase in, in output and it is a sort of a, a tinted facade to it so that you can read it during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at night, the ambient light, the sensor, would dim the, the uh, LED lighting. So you would have the same intensity during the day that you would at night. Uh, again, it's not a, a glaring uh, LED. It's, it's background uh, light, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it uh, on other stations. It's, it's not a, a spotlight effect. I think that they have come in with a, uh, a degree, of, uh, degree of brightness, I guess, during the daylight versus the nighttime hours. That's correct. And what, what might be <coughs> slightly different in your station <coughs> is your hours. Um, what are your hours of operation? 24 hours a day. And that's what I'm talking about. I don't think there's any other station here that's open 24 hours a day. Okay. So the big question to me is, is that a distraction or a negative safety factor if the lumens don't drop down to a certain level? I don't know what that level might be. In terms of the nighttime uh, intensity, uh, the, the sensor just identifies ambient light or darkness. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, five o'clock uh, winter night or yep. two o'clock in the morning. It's the same sort of intensity. Uh, you know, again, I, I don't think the nighttime LED price panels have been objectionable uh, <coughs> in intensity throughout uh, other communities, uh, and I don't expect it to be objectionable to this community at 24 hours in that, um, uh, in that I, area. I was thinking more of the um, traffic along 128, especially during the winter hours, um, where it could be a distraction, <clears throat> but I don't know what the safety aspect mm -hmm. of it, uh, where it shines basically. I mean, your, <coughs> your freestanding sign is high enough that it uh, is observable even before you get off the highway. Um, I don't know about the, the rest of it. I just asked that question. I don't have the answers yeah, in I don't the challenge yeah. meeting. I, I, all I can say is that, again, the existing, the proposed modifications, we're not making the sign any higher. It already has <coughs> internal illumination. <coughs> right. The LED aspect of the sign, it's not increasing uh, the, the, uh, the, the ambient light the ambient effect lighting anymore than, than what is there right now. Right. The it's, it's purely just a uh, another method of, of providing the light that can be controlled in terms of changing the price. That's the only way to do it is with the LED. And the bylaws technical de uh, no, description saying LED is, is uh, yeah, not allowed. So I mean, it, it's not like it's a whole different light level. It's the same sort of light level in terms of being readability. <coughs> it's not a, a, a beacon. Mm -hmm. It's just a different method of, of uh, the same intensity. So should that be a, a problem and that is brought up to you by the building inspector or somebody else, that could be adjustable. That's correct. <coughs> okay. Should that be a problem, there is uh, uh, adjustments that could be made to the, uh, to the output. Okay. And there is no uh, additional uh, signage on the building. No additional sign. There is an existing sign there yep. that I think the CDPC had mentioned. I, th I think it's a Dunkin' Donuts sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's going to be re remaining. We're not doing anything to that. Okay. And uh, you split the uh, request, <coughs> I take it uh, from hearing you, oh, yes. to uh, break it into two parts. One is for the LED signage. Uh, and the other one is for the canopy illumination? And signage, okay. correct. Uh, just in terms of the board's vote, I didn't want it to be all lumped into one, one all or nothing. Sure. Uh, we know that the city I think we can put a condition, the, basically, yeah. when we make our decision uh, yep. on it, if we had to. Okay. Yeah. I go along with David. Um, we've, we've done how many of these already? Yeah, as long as they are consistent within the town, I don't have a problem. Right. With it. I know coming in on 28, there's the new the Merit the station just has it. I think the mobile station has it coming down 28. Yep. Merit obviously is very close to 128. Mutual. 
Yeah, mutual, I'm sorry, never nice. Mutual way. Very close to 128. We just had the Shell Station. Right. Oh, go, oh, that was Golf. Golf, I believe, up on Main Street here. Right? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's, it's a Golf it Shell. It used to be Shell. Yeah. But that hasn't happened yet. Where we just, no. Yeah, it hasn't happened. Yeah. No, you're right. It, we've had a number of them here. <coughs> and we also have the one down at uh, uh, okay. Cumberland Farms down at the Rotary, which we just gave. Okay, them. yeah, yeah. That's that's a golf, you know. Come on, find us the road. Yeah, we on sale. Yeah. All right. Can I see what these are? Pardon? That's the only. Oh, yeah. Comments that I have. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Questions? Uh, I thought I heard you in your opening comments when you made your presentation and talking about the canopy that you said a couple of shell signs Sign. on the on the canopy. Right. The, the uh, original proposal was uh, each side of the, the canopy to have uh, these logos, so there would be two. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting approach. To, yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> All right, so I think each yeah. corner of the canopy. Okay. Uh, so All that right. drive one way you'd be able to see. Yep, I see it now. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. This is probably a point of clarification for me or, or gaining knowledge here, but I notice on one of your pump displays you got three, three alphanumeric displays yes. for regular plus and V power, and then on the other one you got four. Right, that's a diesel. Which is regular plus plus. Uh, well, it, it's really not and regular diesel. plus so plus. So what, what just it is, explain the diff what's the difference here? Yeah, yeah. It, there's one dispenser <coughs> on each of the islands that has essentially the four products, regular, uh, Plus V power and diesel, oh. uh, so it's it's not plus plus. It's it's really uh, V power. Supposed to be V power. Yeah, yeah okay. correct. All right. Okay. Uh, like everyone else has said, we've done this several times uh, in town already, and it seems to be the way to go. I mean, uh, <coughs> and it's probably going to probably hear a lot more of these kinds of things coming down the pike. Uh, I was trying to rationalize why you needed more logos on the canopy. Unless it was, in my mind, I was trying to get the attention of traffic on 128.95. Because the, the position of that logo on the canopy is not that far away from the freestanding sign logo. I mean, they're not very far away. And I always said to myself, it probably looks better with one than it does with two. Okay. So I was really trying to search for why you were really doing that, okay? Unless there's a standardization on the part of Shell. That they're trying to do all their canopies the same I, way. I'll tell you that is the uh, the actual uh, reason for the two <coughs> logos on the canopy. Their standard is. That's what I figured. Yeah. Uh, though it's difficult uh, to identify that as a. And I'm trying to picture the illumination of the canopy itself. The line illumination all the way along. That's a good sized canopy. That illumination is going to be very attention getting, I think. Again, it's the intensity of the light isn't that great. It's a, there's a red bar, a Lexan, Lexan bar that has uh, lighting within it that has a glow to it, and then it has a sort of a back wash to the yellow. Uh, it's, it's not a high glare lighting. It's again a, a standard that uh, other shell canopies have utilized. Uh, and I know there was some question raised somewhere where that, that those, those logos on the canopy are basically someone, people might consider that as a, another second freestanding sign. I don't, yeah, I think in the my mind, I don't consider it a freestanding sign. Yeah, I think the building inspector considered them. It's more of a marquee them, sign than it is a, a, yeah, a freestanding I think, sign. But I think the building inspector's position was it, uh, additional wall signs, which were not allowed. Right. So we would need to get a variance for the number of wall signs, which included. I'm kind of in concert with the guys so far that have spoken, and that the LEDs on the toppers, LEDs on the freestanding sign, I don't have a problem <coughs> with that. Okay. I'm not as convinced in my own mind about the canopy and the additional logo signs. I'll leave it there for the moment. Eric. Comments. Well, it's consistent with 
what we usually see with these things. Um, I'm actually not opposed to the canopy provision, given that it is in a uh, land or development industrial area of town, and every other um, gas station that we've dealt with has one. I mean, we just brought up the, um, the mutual case that we had, nearly identical. And I think that what's nice about this is this is really an industrial quarter, so I actually don't have a problem. On the, on the mutual, though, I think it's just painted. There's no it's painted, it's not lit. Right. Where this is requiring a, it be yeah, lit. I guess, I guess I'm not sure. I feel like. No. The only thing in my mind that I recall it. that's different between that, the, I, the canopy is not lit. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm right. positive of that. And there's no, there's no, I don't think there's a logo on there either. Well, I know no. there's no logo. The only thing else. different about that one than some of the other things we've seen is that the Pump toppers do have changing signage. They do. Huh? On the, uh, the uh, mutual? You have the yeah. LED prices, and right above it, you have <coughs> changing signage. Hmm. Hmm. Credit to cash, cash to credit, credit to cash. Uh -huh. It's a changing sign. It's the only difference between that and some of the other. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, somewhere along the way, we approved that. Maybe we didn't realize yeah, well, that. I think that, that one was a split vote. Huh? I think, I think that was a split vote. You thought? But they so were, I don't think there's a we precedent asked, for the canopy line. That's we, what I'm we, saying. we were asked for the same thing down at Cumberland on the, at, at the uh, Rotary, right. which we denied. Right. Right. I have to go back and revisit the decision on that one. I, cause I can't recall that we, if we knew that they were going to be changing, you know, uh, every two or three seconds. I can't believe we would have done that. Talking about mutual. Yeah. 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 yeah I, you I didn't drive by there. It does yeah, change. I, I did not realize. It's a that. credit for the price and then cash price. Yeah. Hmm. Two, it, it, the price changes. Well, yeah. but, uh, nothing, okay. nothing, nothing further, Eric. Okay. But I, I guess the only difference with that two side is it's not advertising milk. Right. It's still the pump topper that's advertising the price of gas. Right. And just that the prices change, whether it's cash or you cash, pay by cash, cash, cash or yeah. credit. And I, and I think the, mm. <coughs> the changing sign, you know, the ticker tape type LED is the thing that we were trying to get away from right. where it's advertising the price of a gallon of milk or I'm trying to remember the one, but if you, if that you go over to, to the Cumberland and Wakefield, yeah. they have the changing Correct. sign. And mm -hmm. if I recall, I think it says... Member, member, non-member. Ah, that's the flicking there. They're not advertising anything else other than mm -hmm. a member price, non-member price. So yeah, it's, it's kind of the quirky. same thing as mutual. And yeah, except it's just two different words. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, kind of quirky that 500 feet of geography changes what you can do. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the, well, one of the questions I had was what the hours of operation were going to be. So th this this is a unit that's 24/7 on that uh, on it and uh, I I would agree with uh, maybe some of the comments you heard here from other members of the board that uh, I, I don't have an issue with the uh, the freestanding sign putting an LED <coughs> uh, price on that or the pump top is seeing that the pump top is have to display a price anyway I mean that's state law whether they be LED even you know, supposedly any price Glenn would consider that would be a sign, but it's it's state law that's required yeah, on top yeah, of the yeah. pump. So that uh, is something that's required. The canopy, I d we we have not allowed one yet in town, and whether we are waiting for a revision of the bylaws, so be it. If the bylaws change, that's the way it will be. But right now, I think we've held off on doing any lighting of the canopies and I, I would prefer not to myself uh, have any logo up there lighting or anything else you could paint it obviously the yellow paint the shell, the shell colors yellow red but uh, any lighting I would be opposed to on that uh, so no further comments from board members I can open this up for public comment 
And uh, is there anybody from here from the public who would like to speak? Uh, I haven't sworn you in. <laughs> so uh, let me uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, testimony given before the board is taken under oath, so if you think you may want to speak, please stand and raise your right hand. I swear the testimony given before me, before the board, will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I, I will. Do. Okay. Uh, state your name and address, please. Uh, Tony Durazzo, 130 John Street. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. I would like to address the uh, this canopy. Okay. One of the issues with granting a variance for a canopy lighting is that uh, once one gas station has it, even if they are further away from residential um, areas, then others will ask for it also. And one of the reasons why uh, CBDC has been reluctant to grant it is because I believe the last few that have requested it, uh, the mobile on Main Street at the corner of uh, the West, West Street. Uh, summer, I right? guess. Summer, summer. Yeah, yes. coming down. Summer. Yeah, they had requested it, and the mobile over by um, Franklin and Main Street had also requested it. And the problem becomes, once again, once you let one have it, now others mm -hmm. are looking for it, and they have uh, a closer to residential. Also, um, the, I'd like to address a comment by Mr. Hagstrom that while the area is a PUDI, the applicant has never requested PUDI status. So even though it's an overlay district, you cannot use the PU, PUDI uh, rules unless they actually apply for PU, PUDI status. If you check the bylaw, it's an either or, it's not a both. Mm -hmm. And finally, I would ask that the board review their uh, mutual gas station decision to see if they actually granted a variance for what would be considered an animated sign, any sign that changes uh, the message more than eight times a day by bylaw. My guess is the board did not, and that the applicant simply took advantage of, um, of the LED sign to make that change. And I do have a question for the applicant. Uh, the reference was that the only time the price on the um, pump, pump tops would change is when the price changes. As a shell station, I believe they're part of the stop and shop uh, gasoline network where you can get a discount on your gasoline using your stop and shop card. Mm -hmm. So would the price change when somebody is doing so and getting their discount? Or would it remain at the standard rate? Thank you. Uh, would you, the, do you, could you respond to that? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the, the display will not change. What happens is the uh, reduction in price yes. is, is shown in the, 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 the screen in, there. That, in the screen know, on the electronic 30, pump. 30 cent discount or something? Yeah, it, it rolls back the price. Uh, right? We but pick up the nozzle where you see. You'll see the, 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 the price changes, okay. right? On, on the pump display, on the, but yes. not on the top. Or That's on, correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's okay, no, very good. Thank you. Uh, any further questions from the public? If not, I will close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, any further comments from board members on this? Uh, I will note in, in, in the, the comment from the public brought up a point that uh, I was down to town hall earlier this week because I was curious in that I knew this was a special area down here. And I had asked for what was approved back when, when that station first went in, and they did not know. They can't find the files on it. Uh, it's, they said, oh, it's so old, we don't have it. And it's so old. It seems like it's been, what, 15, 16 years maybe, that's all. But uh, they were saying they couldn't find the original application for, you know, the, in the plan for that uh, file. Uh, for that station down there uh, on it. That's all I can say uh, on that. Uh, anyway. Uh, it wasn't originally a shelf station, though, was it? Uh, I don't know if it originally was. Probably a Texas it was a Texas Probably Texas. back when, yeah. Uh, again, this was all put in when, obviously, the Home Depot went in, uh, uh, Jordan's, even before then, probably. It was one of the first ones. Uh, Mr. The Chairman, I've been at my address of 130 John Street for You probably know better years. than we do, yes. And yes, the, uh, the Shell station, a gas station was there even before I moved in. So it was well before the Home Depot. Oh, okay. Matter of fact, I believe it was 
probably even before that, because there was the, uh, it used to be an Exxon right across from my house. It's now the Salem Five. Okay. And I want to say that even goes back to the 1970s at least. Yeah. Okay. So a anyway, the, the shot of it was that they couldn't find the original application and, and things on that. And that's rare. Yeah, that, that's right. But uh, any further comments uh, from board members? Anybody? If not, I would entertain a motion on this particular case. Well, maybe we'll let the lawyers oh, off the hook yeah. with their year end stuff. Okay. Uh, I would move to grant the petitioner. Uh, Ayub. Ayub? Ayub. 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 Engineering Inc. Uh, agent for 87 Walker Brook Road. LLC. LLC. Yeah. A variance from Section 8. I guess I'll use the top of yeah. Section 8.0. Uh, of the zoning bylaw in order to <coughs> modify an existing freestanding sign to include LED signage, add LED pump topper signs, I don't know how we want to handle, we want to handle the uh, canopy separately. Uh, uh, make the motion to include that as well. Uh, it, uh, unless you reword the, uh, hmm? unless you reword it a little bit. <coughs> Asking <coughs> the board, <coughs> that the board heard the request. Um, mm. 187 or 87, what is it? Yeah, 187. 87, 87 yeah. Walkers Drive LLC. And I think you want to reverse that too. <coughs> because you're awarding the uh, granted permit to 87 uh, Walkers Book Drive LLC with the agent. I think, I think you could note that it's like the variance consists of three requests. Yep. One being the freestanding exactly. sign, one being the pump top, as one being the canopy, and then we could vote on all three. Vote on vote three on separately. On all, three well, separately. but write it up as one. Well, right. I think you're right. Yeah. right. Well, you can make your motion one, however you see that. Uh, you know how you would vote or something, and. <coughs> or you yeah. could make three separate motions. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's a lot of yeah, oxygen. Yeah, I tend to make, try to keep it cleaner than that. Uh, I, I, I know C CPDC, they just included it as, right. dun, 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 you know, in their decision at the end, uh, they just noted, we approved this, we approved this, we disapproved this. Hmm. Okay, I guess I, w I would probably make the motion to go through the grant the petitioner, et cetera, et cetera, uh, under a variance under Section 3 in order to accomplish three separate requests or mm -hmm. one being to modify the existing freestanding sign to include LED signage secondly to add LED pump topper signs and three to add an illuminated canopy sign on the property located at 87 Walker Brook Road uh, the changes would be as shown on sign plan SG-1, <coughs> canopy elevations SG-2, and proposed site signage SD-3. Uh, all prepared by Ayub Engineering. <coughs> Address such and such for eighty for Noria Engineering or Energy Corporation. Uh, all documents dated with revisions through nine thirty fifteen. Right. We need to say anything else. Well, you want to, you want to uh, indicate what the uh, decision of the board was? Excuse me. You want to indicate what the decision of the board was. I can't hear you. <coughs> you want to indicate what the decision of the board was <coughs> in the three parts. Yeah. Yeah. The board then approved. <coughs> well, I think we, yeah, we'll go through the three we parts. We go through the three parts. And we they, go through they, the three parts, vote on that, and then write it up as one decision. Write it up as one decision. How's that? I think that would be okay. 
So part one would be the freestanding sign, approval of an LED pricing yeah, uh, pieces, shown on the parts. freestanding sign. So we're going to vote on three separately. We'll vote on each part each separately. separately. We'll right. write it up as one decision. And, and we'll write, if there's a difference in one versus the other, yeah. versus the other then we'll write them up that way. If, the, if okay. they're all approved, right. then we'd write them up as a, as a consolidated. I second that. We're all unanimous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. I second that. Seconded motion. by David. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of let's let's take the first uh, the first one would be the first request to, uh, being the uh, LED price lighting on the uh, freestanding free sign. sign. Uh, all those in favor, uh, please indicate raising your right hand. Thank you. So that's passed. Uh, the next one with that note five zero zero passed. And yep. the next one would be the uh, LED lighting on the, the pump toppers. On the pump toppers. Right. Pump toppers have an LED lighting. All those in favor, raise your right hand. And the uh, next uh, request was for uh, uh, signage and an illumination, uh, lit signage and illumination on the canopy. canopy. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, raise your right hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. Let it be shown. Uh, that's zero, zero, 005. Uh, zero, zero, five, zero, zero, five, zero on yeah. that one request. And now, do you, want to, <coughs> do you want to add in there subject to <coughs> adjustment of the illumination um, by the, uh, the town yeah. officials? Subject you mean with the pump toppers? Or with it? No, both with the freestanding. Right, freestanding. Okay, standing standing okay. all right, we could do that. That's fine. Yep. <coughs> okay. So basically, what we do is we have an approval for uh, sign plan SG one, but uh, not an approval for SG two or SG three. Okay. The pump top is and the freestanding sign is shown on, shown on SG-1. Yep. Right. That's approved. So, uh, oh, I don't have the <laughs> stamp. Let me, I'll stamp the, uh, this plan here, SG-1, and we can give you that uh, tonight. Let's see. Just a quick question. Is there an appeal period that has to expire before the years? Yes, there is. Yes. Uh, we, we, we have a certain, uh, we try to get the decision written up within uh, 14 days. Uh, usually it's, it's before that. And then after that, there's a 20 day, we file that with the town clerk, and then there's a 20 day appeal period from about us on that. Okay. Just the only thing I would have, the only comment I would make too is that, uh, you know, as David said, the bylaws are going to take a look at signage <coughs> bylaws right. somewhere down <laughs> the road. That may result in your ability to change canopy configurations at some point. You need to look at that, perhaps, and if I'm sure it becomes an allowed thing, then sure it does change. you can always come back. We'll take a look. You'll be on top of it. That's right. I'm sure. <laughs> okay, I think this covers... That the plan, okay. So we just approved basically, me? yeah. That's just uh, just plan SG1 was approved, the other two plans we do not approve. Right. Okay, Question. thank you. Yeah, we're not going near them though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your patience. Thank you, thank you. Let's see here. Let me, uh, that plan in and yeah. Okay. Sai, will you write that up? I'll have to do. I'll do it tomorrow because I'll forget the whole damn thing by Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you again. Good night. Good night. Okay. Fourteen. Three. Okay, I 
do not believe we have any other business here before the board tonight. I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Do I hear a second? John, second. All those in favor? Oops. Thank you very much. Next meeting will be December 17th. So, Robert, uh, maybe before that meeting we'll touch base? Yes. Um, uh, if, if the board's going to have...